Why do we have Chris with all the cores at the same speeds and not combinations of different speeds? In general if you are buying a new computer you would determine which processor to buy by what your expected workload will be. Performance in games tends to be determined by single core speed, whereas applications like video editing are determined by number of cores. In terms of what is available on the market, all the PCs seem to have roughly the same speed with the main differences being more threads or more cores. For example, Intel Core i5-7600K, base frequency 3.80 GHz, 4 cores, 4 threads. Intel Core i7-7700K, base frequency 4.20 GHz, 4 cores, 8 threads. AMD Ryzen 5 1600X, base frequency 3.60 GHz, 6 cores, 12 threads. AMD Ryzen 7 1800X, Base frequency 3.60 GHz, 8 cores, 16 threads. So why do we see this pattern of increasing cores with all cores having the same clock speed? Why do we not have variants with differing clock speeds? For example, two big cores and lots of small cores. For example sake, instead of, say, 4 cores at 4.0 and NBSB, GHG, IE 4x4 and NBSB, GHG 16 and NBSB, GHG Maximum, what about a CPU with 2 cores running at say 4.0 and NBSB, GHG and say 4 cores running at 2 and NBSB, GHG, IE 2x4.0 and NBSB, GHG plus 4x2.0 and NBSB, GHG 16 and NBSB. GHG maximum. Wouldn't the second option be equally good at single-threaded workloads, but potentially better at multi-threaded workloads? I ask this question as a general point, not specifically about those PIS I listed above, or about any specific one specific workload. I am just curious as to why the pattern is as it is. This is known as heterogeneous multiprocessing HMP, and is widely adopted by mobile devices. In ARM-based devices which implement Big Dot Little, the processor contains cores with different performance and power profiles, for example some cores run fast but draw lots of power, faster architecture and or higher clocks, while others are energy efficient but slow, slower architecture and or lower clocks. This is useful because power usage tends to increase disproportionately as you increase performance once you get past a certain point. The idea here is to get performance when you need it and battery life when you don't. On desktop platforms, power consumption is much less of an issue so this is not truly necessary. Most applications expect each core to have similar performance characteristics, and scheduling processes for HMP systems is much more complex than scheduling for traditional SMP systems. Windows 10 technically has support for HMP, but it's mainly intended for mobile devices that use ARM Big Dot Little. Also, most desktop and laptop processors today are not thermally or electrically limited to the point where some cores need to run faster than others even for short bursts. We've basically hit a wall on how fast we can make individual cores, so replacing some cores with slower ones won't allow the remaining cores to run faster. While there are a few desktop processors that have one or two cores capable of running faster than the others, this capability is currently limited to certain very high-end Intel processors, as Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0 and only involves a slight gain in performance for those cores that can run faster. While it is certainly possible to design a traditional x86 processor with both large, fast cores and smaller, slower cores to optimize for heavily threaded workloads, this would add considerable complexity to the processor design and applications are unlikely to properly support it. Take a hypothetical processor with two fast KB Lake, 7th generation core, cores and 8 slow Goldmont, Atom, cores. 
you'd have a total of 10 cores, and heavily threaded workloads optimized for this kind of processor may see a gain in performance and efficiency over a normal quad-core KB Lake processor. However, the different types of cores have wildly different performance levels, and the slow cores don't even support some of the instructions the fast cores support, like of. ARM avoids this issue by requiring both the big and little cores to support the same instructions. Again, most Windows-based multi-threaded applications assume that every core has the same or nearly the same level of performance and can execute the same instructions, so this kind of asymmetry is likely to result in less than ideal performance, perhaps even crashes if it uses instructions not supported by the slow cores. While Intel could modify the slow cores to add advanced instruction support so that all cores can execute all instructions, this would not resolve issues with software support for heterogeneous processors. A different approach to application design, closer to what you're probably thinking about in your question, would use the PU for acceleration of highly parallel portions of applications. This can be done using APIs like OpenPL and CUDA. As for a single chip solution, AMD promotes hardware support for PU acceleration in its APIs, which combine a traditional CPU and a high-performance integrated PU onto the same chip, as heterogeneous system architecture, though this has not seen much industry uptake outside of a few specialized applications. What you're asking is why are current systems using symmetric multiprocessing rather than asymmetric multiprocessing? Asymmetric multiprocessing were used in the old days, when a computer was enormous and housed over several units. Modern CUSR casts one unit, in one die, where it is much simpler not to mix CUS of different types, since they all share the same bus and RAM. There is also the constraint of the clock that governs the CPU cycles and RAM access. This will become impossible when mixing CUS of different speeds. Clockless experimental computers did exist and were even pretty fast, but the complexities of modern hardware impose a simpler architecture. For example, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge cores can't be running at different speeds at the same time since the L3 cache bus runs at the same clock speed as the cores. So to prevent synchronization problems they all have to either run at that speed or be park slash off. Link, Intel's Sandy Bridge architecture exposed. Also verified in the comments below for Skylake. Edit, some people have mistaken my answer to mean saying that. Mixing piss is impossible. For their benefit I state, mixing of differing piss. Is not beyond the day's technology, but is not done. Why not is the question. As answered above, this would be technically complicated therefore costlier, and for too little or no financial gain, so does not interest the manufacturers. Here are answers to some comments below. Turbo Boost changes CPU speed so they can be changed. Turbo Boost is done by speeding up the clock and changing some multipliers, which is exactly what people do when overclocking, except that the hardware does it for us. The clock is shared between cores on the same CPU, so this speeds up uniformly the entire CPU and all its cores. Some phones have more than one CPU of different speeds. Such phones typically have a custom firmware and software stack associated with each CPU, more like two separate PIS, or like CPU and CU, and they lack a single view of system memory. This complexity is hard to program and so asymmetric multiprocessing was left in the mobile realm, since it requires low level close to the hardware software development, which is shunned by general purpose desktop OS. This is the reason that such configurations aren't found in the PC, except for CPU slash CU if we stretch enough the definition. My server with two Xeon E52670V3, 12 cores with height, currently has cores at 1.3 GHC, 1.5 GHC, 1.6 GHC, 2.2 GHC, 2.5 GHC, 2.7 GHC, 2.8 GHC, 2.9 GHC, and many other speeds. A core is either active or idle. All cores that are active at the same time run at the same frequency. 
What you are seeing is just an artifact of either timing or averaging. I have myself also noted that Windows does not park a core for a long time, but rather separately parks slash and parks all cores far faster than the refresh rate of resource monitor, but I don't know the reason for this behavior which probably is behind the above remark. Intel Haswell processors have integrated voltage regulators that enable individual voltages and frequencies for every core. Individual voltage regulators differ from clock speed. Not all cores are identical, some are faster. Faster cores are given slightly less power, creating a headroom to boost the power given to weaker cores. Core voltage regulators will be set as low as possible in order to maintain the current clock speed. The power control unit on the CPU regulates voltages and will override OS requests where necessary for cores that differ in quality. Summary Individual regulators are for making all cores operate economically at the same clock speed, not for setting individual core speeds. Why do we not have variants with differing clock speeds? EA. Two big cores and lots of small cores. It's possible that the phone in your pocket sports exactly that arrangement. The arm big dot little works exactly as you described. There it's not even just the clock speed difference, they can be entirely different core types. Typically, the slower clocked ones are even dumber, no out of order execution and other CPU optimizations. It's a nice idea essentially to save battery, but has its own shortcomings. The bookkeeping to move stuff between different CPUs is more complicated, the communication with the rest of the peripherals is more complicated and, most importantly, to use such calls effectively the task scheduler has to be extremely smart and often to guess right. The ideal arrangement is to run non-time critical background tasks or relatively small interactive tasks on on the little cores and wait the big ones only for big, long computations where the extra time spent on the little cores ends up eating more battery, or for medium-sized interactive tasks, where the user feels sluggishness on the little cores. However, the scheduler has limited information about the kind of work each task may be running, and has to resort to some heuristic or external information, such as forcing some affinity mask on a given task, to decide where to schedule them. If it gets this wrong, you may end up wasting a lot of time slash power to run a task on a slow core and give a bad user experience or using the big cores for low priority tasks and thus wasting power slash stealing them away from tasks that would need them. Also, on an asymmetric multiprocessing system it's usually more costly to migrate tasks to a different core than it would be on an SMP system. So the scheduler generally has to make a good initial guess instead of trying to run on a random free core and moving it around later. The Intel choice here instead is to have a lower number of identical intelligent and fast cores, but with very aggressive frequency scaling. When the CPU gets busy it quickly ramps up to the maximum clock speed does the work the fastest it can and then scales it down to go back to lowest power usage mode. This doesn't place particular burden on the scheduler and avoids the bad scenarios described above. Of course, even when in low clock mode, these cores are smart ones, so they'll probably consume more than the low clock stupid big dot little cores. Performance in games tends to be determined by single core speed. In the past, DOS era games, correct. These days, it is no longer true. Many modern games are threaded and benefit from multiple cores. Some games are already quite happy with four cores and that number seems to rise over time. Whereas applications like video editing are determined by number of cores. Sort of true. Number of cores times speed of the core efficiency. If you compare a single identical core to a set of identical cores, then you are mostly correct. In terms of what is available on the market, 
All the puss seem to have roughly the same speed with the main differences being more threads or more cores. For example, Intel Core i5-7600K, Base Freak 3.80 GHE, 4 cores Intel Core i7-7700K, Base Freak 4.20 GHE, 4 cores, 8 threads AMD Ryzen 1600X, Base Freak 3.60 GHE, 6 cores, 12 threads AMD Ryzen 1800X, Base Freak 3.60 GHE, 8 cores, 16 threads. Comparing different architectures is dangerous, but okay. So why do we see this pattern of increasing cores with all cores having the same clock speed? Partially because we ran into a barrier. Increasing clock speed further means more power needed and more heat generated. More heat meant even more power needed. We have tried that way, the result was the horrible Pentium 4. Hot and power hungry. Hard to cool. And not even faster than the smartly designed Pentium M, a P4 at 3.0 GHG was roughly as fast as a P Mob at 1.7 GHG. Since then, we mostly gave up on pushing clock speed and instead we built smarter solutions. Part of that was to use multiple cores over raw clock speed. For example a single 4GHE core might draw as much power and generate as much heat as 3-2GHE cores. If your software can use multiple cores, it will be much faster. Not all software could do that but modern software typically can. Which partially answers why we have chips with multiple cores, and why we sell chips with different numbers of cores. As to clock speed, I think I can identify three points. Low power quiz makes sense for quite a few cases which raw speed is not needed. For example domain controllers, NAS setups, for these, we do have lower frequency PUS. Sometimes even with more cores, for example 8x low speed CPU makes sense for a web server. For the rest, we usually are near the maximum frequency which we can do without our current design getting too hot. Say 3 to 4 GHD with current designs. And on top of that, we do binning. Not all CPU are generated equally. Some CPU score badly or score badly in part of their chips, have those parts disabled and are sold as a different product. The classic example of this was a 4-core AMD chip. If one core was broken, it was disabled and sold as a 3-core chip. When demand for these 3 cores was high, even some 4 cores were sold as the 3-core version, and with the right software hack, you could re-enable the fourth core. And this is not only done with the number of cores, it also affects speed. Some chips run hotter than others. Too hot and sell it as a lower speed CPU, where lower frequency also means less heat generated. And then there is production and marketing and that messes it up even further. Why do we not have variants with differing clock speeds? E. Two big cores and lots of small cores. We do. In places where it makes sense, for example mobile phones, we often have a soak with a slow core CPU, low power, and a few faster cores. However, in the typical desktop PC, this is not done. It would make the setup much more complex, more expensive, and there is no battery to drain. Thank you.